Hi everyone and welcome back to the Board Game Spotlight. Today, Derek and I are going to be taking on Imhotep The Duel. I've been very excited about this game yes. since I first heard about it. It's I true. heard that it was coming out last year at Gen Con or Origins, mm -hmm. and I've been watching it ever since. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is Phil Walker Harding's next game, Imhotep. We absolutely we love, love Imhotep. And they most recently just released the expansion, which, mm -hmm. by the way, is a must-own if you like Imhotep. Probably one of my favorite expansions oh, top, ever. Oh, top five expansion. Oh, easily. Probably easily. top three for me, well, personally. It's, it's a top five expansion for me. But anyways, that's not why we're here. No. We are here to teach you Imhotep Duel, which just released. We got our copy at UKGE, and we're going to share it with you. All right, so the basic premise of Imhotep Duel is that you're playing the roles of Nefertiti and Akhenaten, mm -hmm. one of the most popular royal couples of ancient Egypt. Yep. So you're going to place your meeples tactically to unload the most valuable tokens from six boats. Little by little, you're going to build four monuments in order to gain as many points as possible and win the duel. Mm -hmm. So this uses a grid-based system mm -hmm. that we will show you how to play. Let's dive down to the table. Yep. Okay, so this is Imhotep Duel. <laughs> it's it's very uh, minimalistic it in is. its you know table space, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. And uh, so let's go ahead and just talk about what we're trying to do. Each of us has four of these meeples, mm -hmm. right? Yes. We're going to on your turn. There are three things that you can do. There are three actions. You can place a meeple, mm -hmm. unload a boat, so one of the six boats, or you can choose to spend one of your blue action markers to take that action. Mm -hmm. Those are the three things throughout the entire game. Obviously, if you unload a boat, you're going to take your meeple back. That brings it off the board. Right. And you can only unload a boat if there are at least two meeples in that, in that row. row or column. Mm -hmm. So if it was like this situation, I could choose to, on my turn, mm -hmm. uh, well, actually it be Lizzie's turn because I'd placed a, my own meeple here, but she could choose to unload this column or this row. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going to happen is the closest meeple to the boat is going to unload the furthest mm -hmm. away token. So when I was first playing this, I kind of like the abstracted nature of that mm -hmm. kind of like was messing with my head. But then I figured out, you know what? All you have boat. to do is place the boat over the exact three locations. And that is the token that your mm -hmm. meeple is going to get. So once you think of it that way, yeah. it's very, very simple to follow. Mm -hmm. So if I, so what would you want to do here? You unload one of those sections. You choose well, one of them. obviously I would do the one where I am, but that's a terrible move. I wouldn't do that at this point. But if you did, you would remove your meeple. I would take the 11. I would get Derek mine. would take the blue token. Yep. And then anything that's not taken, anything that's not unloaded is shipped off into the sea. It is gone, discarded Nile, from the game. Into the Nile. Into the Nile River. Into I'm the sorry. Sea. Then we're going to draw... Uh, tokens to refill the boat mm -hmm. so we would refill the boat here with three new tokens and then we'd be on our merry way of uh of starting yep and we're just gonna start with so those. there are several tiles you can take you can take the blue tiles which will give you something that you can do during your game mm -hmm. on your turn there are also pyramids that you can collect um and so the more pyramids you have the more points you're going to earn yep and those so go one is one two to three etc we also have the temple circles. So for each symbol on it, it scores you one point. So the higher ones are going to score you more during the game. And then you have the obelisks. We have the obelisks. So those are one point each. Whoever has the majority will earn six points for those. But you do score a point per obelisk we do. you have. Yes. And then the last thing is the tomb. So it is numbered one through 12 around here. So you want to try and get them in order. So the biggest chain you have in order is going to score you points. So if you had just one, it would score you one. If you had two, if you had like one and two, that's going to be two or four points. And then mm -hmm. uh, it goes up to five. If you have at least five, it's going to score you 25 points. Yeah, max is out of five. It is. But it's going to be really difficult to get five in order because you're going to be yeah. fighting with someone else. They're going to see what you're doing. They may unload the boat and just get rid of that number. And it's just true. And it has to be done, done sequentially. So anytime yes. there's a break in your mm -hmm. numbers, it stops right there. Mm -hmm. So if you go like one, two, three, five, you're only getting one, one two, two, three. three. Yeah. So that's uh, this. This is definitely you, a game of mm -hmm. strategic cutthroat. Yes. Like you are looking at where your opponent mm -hmm. is going, and you are trying to deny them tokens. Yes. Like, I mean, it's it is. <laughs> we'll review it after we yeah. play. Uh, but I think you'll be able to tell from this playthrough that we really, really like this game. Very much. Um, and this is uh, just so all of everyone 
mm-hmm. watching at home. Uh, this is a copy that we bought ourselves. Mm-hmm. We purchased this at UK Games Expo, mm-hmm. but we are so excited to get it onto the table and get this uh, content out to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we hope that you enjoy it. Um, these are going to be our thoughts and our experience playing through this game, so we hope that you enjoy it. Okay, well, let's go. All right. The youngest player goes first. <sighs> Fine. All right. Okay. Ladies first. Yes. Okay, all right, all right. I see what's going on here. Do you? Uh, I do, I do. So I, I raise you one. Ah, uh, that stinks. Okay, that's okay. Change, change, uh, let me jump in on here. Okay, then I will empty this boat. So okay, so you're gonna choose to unload two. the boat. Yes. So that means I get this. Mm-hmm. This action says to place a meeple and unload one to two tokens. So that is a really solid um, action. Okay. And then. Yep, let's refill the boat here. Indeed. Three new tiles. Ooh, the 11. Okay, all right. That's back to me since you unloaded. Okay. So, I'm gonna jump in here. this boat so I'm going to get the uh, closest this mm-hmm. obelisk and the seven mm-hmm. so this obelisk is gonna go right here on my little obelisk board mm-hmm. and my seven is going to sit right here and this token is removed from the game and I retrieve my workers and let's get three new tokens all right now your pyramids will score twice. So there are two different sets of pyramids and they will mm-hmm. both score. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, that's important. Okay. It's your turn. I'm gonna score this. Or I'm gonna Oh, you're gonna this. unload it? Yep. Oh man. You're just throwing stuff away. That don't, you're so wasteful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> here you go. There's three new ones. Let's see what we have here. Um, oof. Okay, so I'm going to use, oh, and by the way, action tokens at the end of the game are worth one victory point if you don't use them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm going to choose to use this and discard it from the game. I'm going to place a meeple and then unload, uh, what is it, one to two tokens mm-hmm. on that uh, boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm going to go here and unload these two. No, I think it's based on how many meeples you have. One to two, so if you had two meeples, you could unload two. Oh, you sure, only have sure, one, sure, sure, sure. So you can take the middle one. Uh, in that case, I'll go here. No, you're right. So I'm going to go with the eight and the obelisk. Okay, so I will then retrieve my workers, mm-hmm. and this comes off. Yep, so amazing. that action is both a placing and an unloading in one shot, mm-hmm. which is very strong. Imitep, the, the base game, had similar actions like that. It did. Where you could gain stones and place in the same action, so... Uh, that feels right at home uh, with that game. Okay. Oh man. Um, I want that. And then that. I'm gonna unload. Oh, okay. Now the game will end when we can no longer load a boat, and in that case, a boat is removed from the from the moorings here, mm-hmm. and then when you get to the second to last boat is gone, the mm-hmm. game ends immediately. Okay. Um, I'm really trying to figure out what I want to do here. Let's go there. Mm. Mm. I'll do this. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna unload this boat. Yeah. So I'm gonna take all three of these. Mm-hmm. No waste there. 
And then I get an obelisk, throw that up here. I have an action token, and then I have, I have some money in my temple, finally. Is that money? I thought it was suns. Uh, whatever it is, yeah. What it's, are we selling? it's something, I don't necessarily know what you would call it. I assumed that it was- a symbol. Well, I assumed it was money because in a temple you would maybe do like offerings, I don't know. Mm -hmm. My turn? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna unload here. Interesting. Interesting, okay. So... Oof. Nice. I'm gonna jump in here. I'm gonna go here? Um... I'll go here. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna unload this boat. So I get this and you get that mm -hmm. and this one goes away. And these come off. So I unloaded, mm -hmm. which means it is your turn. Oh wow, lots of obelisks there. Okay, I'm gonna swap two tokens and unload. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you swapping with? Yeah, because I need this one. Because that'll go to the middle. I'll take it and that gives you the 10. Okay. And then we're unloading. The 10. Well, if I see the 9, that would be fantastic. <laughs> uh, in that case, I'll go here. Oh, I should uh, refill that boat, huh? Yes. That's not going to change where I'm going, but... <laughs> Interesting. So I'm trying to, you know, I really should try to get some pyramids at this point because pyramids are good. You know, I mean, it's kind of thematic to the, to the game probably something that I should try to have in my, my tableau here. Um, but, you know, play it by ear, figure it out. Uh, interesting. I am going to, I'm gonna unload this. Okay. So, I get so the you get the middle one, and I get the two on the ends. Mm -hmm. Okay, and take my workers back. And what is that, we need three more? Mm -hmm. Oh snap, there's the nine. The three and the four is also out there. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I'm gonna unload here. Okay. Oof, we're we're coming dangerously close to the uh, end of the game here, just based on kinda what it feels like in that bag. Um, I am going to go, wow, I really need some pyramids at some point, that would be fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna unload this one. Mm -hmm. So I get the nine and the obelisk. I mean, you know, obelisks look good right now. Do you want me oh, to refill the yeah. boat first? That would help. That may give you an idea of kind of what you're looking at here. Three more. Okay. Okay. Um, I placed it's your turn. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do here. Okay, I'm going to unload. Okay. Then these come off. Alright, this is the last. This is it. The last loading. <laughs> oh my goodness, this game just flies by. And there's never enough time for anything that I want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, man. Ah, dang it. All right, I'm unloading this. This, So I get this. And this one goes off. And this boat is... Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Off the... Uh, okay, so these come off. Not quite what a boat would sound like, but, you know, I tried my best. 
-hmm. So I unloaded, so it's your turn. Now the really cutthroat nature comes through. Okay, I'm gonna unload this boat. Mm -hmm. So I get these two. This boat comes off. Do, 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 do. Go, go meet your friend. Thank you. Thank you. I'm right here. I saw him place my towels. Give me a minute. I gotta make them look all nice and pretty. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna unload this. So it's come off. Mm -hmm. And I get. Uh, well, you got one of these. Which one was it? I was in the middle, so. You're in the middle, yeah. One. Okay. Well, I'm gonna unload here then. Mm hmm. All right, so this is it. When one of those boats is, is gone, mm -hmm. that's the end of the game. Mm -hmm. So I'm going here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to use this. It says take one token. No! I'm going to do this. But that's why we have these up here. Boo. Oh, man. Well played. Well played. In that case, I will do that. No. That. I guess it is victory points. Okay, I'm gonna unload. Take these. At least, hey, look, I finished one one row of this pyramid. Mm hmm And uh, these come off, and that's the game. Oh, it's all she oh, wrote. Oh, no, I. That, that is I, worth a victory point. It is. Yep. Any meeples left on? No, but I would. I got the thing on there, didn't I? Oh, you did. Yeah. Which there you go. I'm sorry. Let me give it to you. I got oh, that. did you get it? Okay, cool. Oh. All right. That's the end of the game. So now we're going to tally up our victory points and the player who has the most is the winner. It's very simple. Uh, you look at your board and you just determine how many you have. So uh, looking at my board, I have a row of five, seven through 11. Five as well. 25 points. 25 here too. I also have three pyramids, so that's six. So that puts me at 31. I have two for three and two for three, so I'm also at six. So we're, we're both at 31. Both at 31 points. Uh, I have one blue action. So we're both at 32 points. Uh, obelisks. This is where it's going to get five. interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you have so the majority. So not only that, but we get a point per obelisk. So I get, I had 32, I have 38. I have 38, and then I get well, then, six. Yeah, I have 37, yeah. So what is that, 44? I'm not doing your math here. <laughs> 38 and, and six. Yeah. 48, or 44. Now you got me all messed up. And then 48, 50, 54, 57, 60 points. 46. 46. Although you beat me last night, so. I crushed you last night. <laughs> it's my turn. Um, so what did we say, 60 to 46? Yep, so 14 point difference. Yep, but that could have easily have been changed had you been able to get a one more. A, a third. Really breaking into that yeah. three of something is better than having two twos. Yeah, we um, let a lot go way too. So that's how you play Imhotep the Duel. Shall we review it? Let's go to the giant talking head. All right, so pretty pretty close-ish game. I think during the game... I think it's closer than last night's game. A little bit closer. But the thing is, you really have to balance being mm -hmm. selfish and knowing when to leave it open to try to sneak in there again. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so much nuance to this game because mm -hmm. of the grid system, which, by the way, is so much fun. The grid, mm -hmm. like, abstracted nature, because mm -hmm. you can go either a row or a column, and then there were some moves that I even made, I don't know if you noticed, mm -hmm. but I was unloading a boat that I didn't necessarily want to unload, but because the row for that was much better for you, mm -hmm. it was taking your meeple off yeah. the board, and so... So this can be... A little on the mean side. Oh, it's definitely very much mm -hmm. not necessarily mean, but it's cutthroat. It's cutthroat. It's like there's only going to be one winner. That. There's yeah. a little bit of take that and, too. And there's two people, so it's highly competitive. That's true. But the thing is, it's just like Imhotep. Imhotep, the base game is very take that because you can sail somebody's ship away. Yeah. And, they're like, and you're not no. getting anything on your turn, but you're making a far less impactful turn for them. Oh, man. Um, 
to be honest with you, this is everything I wanted it to be. It is. I mean, when I thought of, because I didn't know anything about this game. Nope. But we love Imhotep. And we so do. when I was thinking of like a two-player Imhotep version, I'm like, you know, what would that look like? Mm-hmm. And this is, this is what I wanted it to be. Um, so the things that I like, I love the grid system. Mm-hmm. I love the ability to kind of abstract puzzly of placing your meeples Mm -hmm. and then, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I like the, so we didn't have it set up that way on screen so you can see everything, but it actually forms one long Mm -hmm. line in front of you if you line up all the the temple and the the tomb and everything. So you have this kind of like player board stretched out in front of you so you can see it kind of build. Normally the obelisk would grow taller and the pyramids could grow up kind of like instead of using the cubes that they have in Imhotep. I thought that was a really cool way to represent it in a two-player game without having a huge footprint because those cubes are really big and really chunky, which I love for Imhotep, but for Duel, you just don't need that same big chunky components for two people. Absolutely. Uh, The box is small. It's Mm -hmm. minimal. Again, like the minimal footprint, I I appreciate that. The box size here you can see. Mm -hmm. Lizzie for scale. (laughs) <laughs> Easy to like pick up, take with you, throw in a backpack. It's not um, super big. I, I would say that one thing I would have liked to have seen in the game mm-hmm. is a draw bag. Uh, mm-hmm. This is a Star Wars draw bag that we're using because we had one. But because you need to randomly draw three tiles mm-hmm. out and it's put easier them than on having your... like a shuffle pile and you're just <laughs> yeah. Um, a draw bag is pretty an easy addition. So maybe they'll make a thematic one and put it on the BGG store. I don't know. That'd be cool. Um, but anyways, I feel like that was a mm-hmm. a, a miss. Uh, for components because mm-hmm. I mean there's not a lot here mm-hmm. and which is good mm-hmm. it's um but I mean I think a draw bag is an easy inclu- inclusion mm-hmm. so um just just my my opinion the artwork is very similar to what mm-hmm. Imhotep is so again if you didn't like Imhotep art probably not going to like this one but if you did then you know it's whatever no I'm just saying like if I'm just I, trying to hit all I, the no, all the edge cases anything. here I know but you're over I there, like it because mm. I like it I like it, too. I like the game. I like the art. I love... I mean, obviously, Derek and I play a lot of two-player games. That is probably, like, 90% of what we play. Yeah. So, when you can take Imhotep, which plays fine at two-player, and boil it down to an intense two-player abstract game... Right. It's going to be far more competitive and much more enjoyable for the two of us. I, I do think that uh, the A-side is... is um very entry level gateway. Absolutely. I think that yeah, for a hobby mention. gamer, you're going to want to play the B sides. These are dual sided. Um, they are, yeah, dual sided like the expansion and mm-hmm. the regular uh, Imhotep. But I, you're going to want to play the B sides mm-hmm. for an like an advanced yes. hobby gamer because the way the temple scores is much more interesting because now you're trying to collect mm-hmm. the different like point values. Mm-hmm. And then on the pyramid, only your smallest one scores. Mm-hmm. So it's even more important. Mm-hmm. To, and then the obelisk yeah. turns into the race. Like the first person to have five scores twelve points. Yep. The second person only scores six yep. points. So so it becomes a lot more competitive for what you're going after. Hundred percent play with the B side. Uh, that's going to elevate the game experience um, for for those of you who are looking for a little bit more out Neat. of your two player games. Yes. Um, overall, though, I think this is a this is the definite thumbs up, especially in the two player mm-hmm. arena where we don't get a lot of two player only games. Mm-hmm. You know. That, so that's good. Mm-hmm. I think that you should definitely give this a play if you get a chance to. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, for people that just like to have two-player games in your collection, I think this is an easy in- inclusion. Absolutely. So um, overall, though, that's that's how you play. Again, it's a very quick 20 to 30-minute game mm-hmm. and oh, yeah. uh, doesn't overstay its welcome at all. Never. Anything else you want to add on to that? Nope, that's it. Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed learning Imhotep Duel and our thoughts on it. And we will catch you next time with the next review. See you, everybody. Bye.